Great. So we've learned a lot of Python so far. Uh, we're pretty much done with uh, all the data structures that there is to learn. Uh, be it we've learned uh, all the basics that is there, and that would have laid a solid foundation. And in this session, we will talk about files, a really uh, interesting concept. Uh, we'll start with basics, and we'll build on to work with a lot of files later. So we know that everything in Python is an object. And if, we, if I haven't mentioned that earlier, please note that everything in Python is considered as an object. Now, file is also an object. In Python, uses these files objects to interact with external files on your computer. Now, it be it any audio file, text file, emails, you know, presentations, you can use these files objects to be any sort of a file you have on your computer. And uh, you, you will need to install certain libraries, of course, or modules to interact with those various file types. And they're very much easily available. There's a list of uh, modules that you can use. And they're pretty useful and handy, easy to implement as well. We'll cover downloading modules later on in the course. Uh, but uh, we'll, let's exploit what already is built in uh, in Python. And there is a, Python can easily work on open uh, formats like TXT. And it has a built-in open function that allows us to open and play with basic file types. So first, uh, we need a file, though. So we're going to use uh, how uh, use IPython or Jupyter to write a file. And then let's see how uh, it all turns out and uh, develop our understanding of how to handle files in Python. Great. I'm moving on to my screen. All right. Uh, let me maximize this. Um, I'm going to open a file. Let's say that's the first step, right? So how do we do that? Uh, it is pretty simple. I'm um, going to, let's say, uh, suggesting this with, uh, let's say, I'm going to add write file. And this is a, a simple function that allows us to write a file. Let's say test.txt. And this will get me to create a file called test.txt. And then say, I'm going to put some words. Uh, this is some text for my file. And let's see what happens if uh, I run this. It says, it says writing test. So this is how now a file is written. If I go to my finder, and then I go wherever my file is located, I have a long way to navigate, but uh, it will not take a lot of time. Yeah, there is my workspace. And then I have Python training, and I have another folder here. Um, great. So this is in a place you can notice that I have test.txt stored. It's in the same place where I have my uh, files running. So let's go back, and uh, I would like to show you that uh, this file is created. Now, we can go and um, read this file. But to read any file, uh, we need to click on it, open it, right? So we have to do something similar in Python. We have to open a file first. And there is a function to do that. It's called open function. And the open function also takes in some arguments, or also called parameters. And let's see how they are used. So I'm going to say my file. I'm also assigning it a variable name. And then I will use the function open. I could have just written open and then given uh, the file name like this, test.txt. Uh, this also would have opened it, but what do I do with it next? So to do, to handle that, I have created a variable and I've assigned it a value so that I could run this function and uh, retain that uh, in memory that or keep the file open in memory of Python. And then once we open the file, the next obvious method is to read. Correct. So there is a read function. It's very very uh, obvious, and I'll use now. I don't need to. Um, assign. I just need to call that method. And that's how we read a file. So it, it's printing out everything we have on the file. So this is how uh, it works. And um, what happens if I run this again? I want to read this again. And notice that uh, you got just two, uh, quotes, two uh, uh, semicolons here, single quotes. Because it happens, you can, because you can imagine that you're reading a book. And there is a reading cursor, and that goes to the end of the line uh, of the file after having read it. So there is nothing left to read, and it's come to the end, and it, it, we need to reset that cursor back. So that's something we need to do, and it's done by the seek method. So I can run that seek method on this by telling seek, and go back to my first index, which is 0. And now I read again, this rerun this, 
and this reads this again. So that's how it works. So we can write to a file as well. So you might ask me, um, how do I write to a file again? And once I've written the first time, and I want to write something on top of that, because the open function will only allow you to read the file. Um, by once you have it open, you have to read. What do you? What about write? Great. So the great question. Uh, to be able to write, we need to sort of first give it permission to write. So I'll take my file and I will open it, okay? And it's, I will say which file I want you to open. Then I say give permission, make, make it writable. So when I do this, I will be able to write uh, files into this. So this is very uh, fairly simple. And then after uh, this is done, I will use a write function. And in this, I will say this is a new line of text. All right, great. So now I will try to re run this read again. It's still not there because we need to, we have already run this and uh, uh, my cursor is at the end of it. So um, let's see what happens if I try to read this. So there is this new line of text that has come in. So that's how it works. So what is this is happening? What happened to whatever I typed first? Um, so so for that, we have to do the write file again uh, to overwrite something. So what, let's try to overwrite that again. So we'll take this first thing that I had earlier. Let's make a, a quick preview for, of uh, this. And also, let's see if we can use a for loop so I, I can iterate over a text file. And uh, so I'm going to call it the same. In this, I'm say first, first line, second line. Okay, so this will overwrite. Overwriting test will happen after this. Now we can use a little bit of flow. Uh, we'll look at flow in, in a later part of the time. But flow is a sense of uh, also called for loop. It's also part of the flow. We'll look at it uh, as we go. And this flow tells the program to go every line and do something. Uh, let's say for uh, every line in my file which is open I will use it under open and I want you to hey Python I want you to print whatever is in the line so I want you to print each line and okay it says missing parenthesis and it says uh, so it's printing the first line and the second line that way so don't worry about fully understanding this yet uh, for loops are coming up soon but we'll break it down and uh, what we did above now, we said that every line in this text file, and they said, go ahead and print that line. Uh, we could have called the line object anything. So I can take this same thing, and I'll say, I can call this uh, James Bond. And this is also James Bond. And I print this. It's still printing this. The way Python sees it, it understands that you're addressing the objects or elements inside your file name and that's not of any relevance to python what is most of relevance is that the for loop in open function and print these are really important by not calling read on the file um, like earlier that we did here we're actually reading the file by using the for loop and this way the text file is not stored in memory so know that memory storage is, is sometimes really costly so that is one way of reducing your time of execution of your uh, program and helping you execute faster using flow control. And uh, there's also notice that there is a indent on the line for uh, this. And there is also a parenthesis for the print. And this uh, white space is required. There is this indent on the second line af right after the colon. So if I put this here. OK, let's see that as an example. If What happens if I take that indent off? White spaces are very important. And if I take this, it says expected an indent block. And that is uh, really bad. So that's not the right way of syntaxing. So if you're using a good IDE, it should automatically do this for you. Otherwise, you will get this error. And uh, Python makes use of these white spaces a lot. And you can see uh, as we go. And we learn a lot about this. Great. and. Um, Finally, um, let's uh, do one more example uh, in this. 
uh, if you'd like to just uh, try this out you're on your own create a text and uh, create another text file I'm not going to show a solution to this but this is just for you to practice create another file uh, put some text in it and try to use the for loop to print just like this and see what happens and it's important for you to try this out next up let's uh, learn about uh, sets and booleans and I see you in the next class